Thank you for staying with us. Uh, reactions have uh, a still trailing the Supreme Court judgment which upheld the election of Abba Yusuf as governor of Kanu State, Caleb Mutfuang as governor of Patu State, reversing the decisions of the Court of Appeal and the Governorship Election Petitions uh, Tribunal, which sucked them. Other governors who also got the nod of the Supreme Court are governors of Liga State, Babajide Sangwulu, governor of Bochi State, Bala Muhammad, governor of Eboing State, Francis Mwifuru, governor of Zamfara Dauda Lawal, governor of Abia, Alex Oti, and governor of Cross River, Basi Utu. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress uh, supports the verdict of the Supreme Court and the governorship election petition, saying it was the best decision for the Federation. Well, joining us in the studio is a lawyer and public affairs analyst, Jide Ulugun. Jide, good morning. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, the Supreme Court has come up with a verdict for this uh, state, uh, but two of the states stand out for, with regards to the reaction that has been coming out, and that is that of Kanu and also of uh, Plateau State. It's been gen generating some controversies. Uh, we saw the matter of uh, Plateau State that talks about 165,000 votes uh, cancelled, and then uh, that of Kanu State on signed material as being authentic. And then it's generating controversies with the direction uh, the Supreme Court went, because we saw what happened at uh, the tribunal, the appeals court, and now the Supreme Court. And then there are questions as to uh, did these persons go to the same <laughs> law school or what is going on with their interpretation? Are we looking at uh, the matter of uh, ensuring stability for that of Canada? Those who are saying it's because uh, there shouldn't have been uh, the security issues. That was why the Supreme Court went in the direction it went. What really are you interpret interpreting from the judgments? Thank you very much. And let me start by stating that that is why we have the hierarchy of court up to the Supreme Court level. So it's been expected that quite a number of times you may not be satisfied with right. the decision of a lower court that you go to a higher court. And since 1963, when we became a republic, Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. And then um, asking about the interpretation, it's also subject to the justices who are there and how well the matters have been presented. But I must commend the Supreme Court for amplifying some earlier decisions because I'm concerned about that. For instance, the issue of nomination and sponsorship of mm -hmm. candidates. It's been reiterated over and over that this is a matter for parties. <clears throat> it's an internal issue. And so you cannot come from another party to want to leverage on it. And having said that, Again, I push that to the National Assembly. That is mandated by Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended to make laws for the peace, you know, good governance of Nigeria, to look at that gap because the Electoral Act was amended and upscaled and some of the provisions have, have been tested. And so that is there. And the case of Kano State, is quite interesting. Some of us and some uh, Nigerians were asking, why should the discretion of INEC be meted out as punishment for a candidate when you say about 165,663 votes were nullified because INEC did not stamp, sign, and, you know, and, and date as required by Section 71 of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended. Why should the party pay for that? Mm. You know, but I wonder how the Court of Appeal engaged those arguments. And the Supreme Court came out to say, no, uh, you cannot do that. Again, that is another gap I'm pushing to the uh, National Assembly. And again, Section 65 of the Electoral Act as amended is another one that gives a wide discretion. So by and large, yeah, I'm particularly happy that um, right now we have peace in the country because if you wind back uh, to some few days now, it was expected that depending on how the decisions go, that there may be crisis 
in the nation. That, again, is another issue for leadership to look at. Why should judicial interventions in electoral matters cause apprehension mm -hmm. in the society? So we have deep issues to deal with in the country. But then, thank God for those brilliant submissions. And again, like I've argued over the years, that politicians were always politicians. Those who were castigating the judiciary are now praising the judiciary mm -hmm. for, you know, well, for the rule of law, the for this and that. Say that if their castigation, if they didn't castigate the judiciary, <clears throat> it was because the lower courts urge in the matter, in this particular matter, and that's why the Supreme Court, you know, corrected it. And that is the reason, the basis for their castigation, which you know proved them right. But then that's not my question. The question is, the 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 uh, Court of Appeal had also sacked the lawmakers. You know, the governors were able to you know retrieve their mandate when they went to the Supreme Court, but the law the lawmakers were not able to move further beyond the appeal court. Uh, and then these matters are you know they've got you know same semblance you know party issues in the party issues. Uh, isn't that something that it's worrisome you know to use well? Interestingly, the appeal court is the highest destination in that matter. And um, I read an advocacy by the senior silk, Ozekome, requesting that um, the, that category should also be allowed to approach the Supreme Court. So perhaps if they have approached the Supreme Court, it could have been overturned. And the Supreme Court also referred to that matter, how some decisions were ruled out. So right now, I think we are beginning to have you know, an extensive internal mechanism, but mm. unfortunately, you cannot discipline, uh, so to in quotes, you know, for those at that level for those decisions, because uh, ideally, uh, some of them should have been queried, mm. you know, because justice should not only be done, Most but clearly seen to have been done. And that is one of the core virtues that we were taught in the Nigerian law school and globally accepted as the bedrock of legal practice. But here we are now. We keep inventing. So I'm expecting that various stakeholders will look at all this. And again, uh, we go back to Section 131 of the Evidence Act 2011, uh, which stipulates that if you are coming to court for a relief and you allude to some facts, you must be able to prove them. So again, how you litigate is very important here. So you drive your matters fiercely and ensure that you are able to persuade the, the, the bench in such matters. So interestingly, we expect that that aspect of stopping at the appellate, uh, the appeal court level will be looked into going forward. So, and this is what governance system should be all about. You look at gaps that are created by existing norms and try to upscale, to you know, widen the the, the scope of, of justice. Mm. Now, there are concerns raised by the issues, you know, that um, talking about the unsigned documents and then the 165,000 bills cancelled and all of it. The question as to what kind of precedence this is setting, because we we'll also have elections coming up. Are we saying that uh, uh, it is possible to have documents not signed and it is accepted as uh, part of what the process of our electioneering? I mean, what kind of precedence do you see this setting? Isn't it concerning? It's, it's concerning, and, and thank God for the Supreme Court stepping in. And if you look at INEC itself, INEC is a creation of the Constitution, Section 153 of the Nigerian Constitution as amended, and they have the mandate assignment clearly stated out. But I have been one of those emphasizing the discretion INEC has. So some of us would have expected that this issue of not stamping, not signing, and not dating voting materials that led to deducting about 165, you know, 1,663 votes from a candidate's uh, vote, it should not be taken 
lightly. You investigated. Was there a compromise? Mm. If yes, prosecute the officials behind it. So we don't want a situation where we have symptoms, we treat the symptoms, but we don't deal with the root cause, with the root cause of the symptoms. So you just raised a very brilliant point. And if this is extended to all spheres of our national life, we begin to have a better country and a better society. Because I'm concerned about that also. So who should take responsibility for the negligence mm -hmm. of an umpire? Right. You see, so it's like there's a football match and a goal is called and the, the referee looks away, refuses to blow the whistle. You know, so we must fine-tune our processes to ensure that there is accountability. There's a concept I came up with recently, which is called productivity quotient. So if you are expected to be productive, you must be productive. And if there are defaults, there must be sanctions. So these are all issues. And, and that is why we keep addressing the National Assembly, which is a unique part of governance when you talk about democracy, to be on their toes and ensure that they monitor these issues and legislate on them. Well, um, it's still part of um, one of the issues is still, you know, going back to adjudicating our electoral process, you know, why we have to take all of those things to court. Uh, the fact that the Supreme Court tongue lashed a, a lower court uh, is something to worry about, really, because uh, despite those harsh criticisms, the justices of the court below are about to, you know, be elevated to, um, you know, the majority, I mean, to become the majority in the Supreme Court once the... Uh, 11 justices declared by the Senate, you know, December 21st, as um, uh, presented to them by, uh, sworn in rather, by, to be expected to be sworn in by President Bola Tinobu. Uh, would this not, or does this not um, sort of question their capability in handling that highest uh, position in the court of law? It should, but they have been screened mm. by the uh, judicial, National Judicial Council they have been presented to the president who has presented the nominations to the National Assembly for confirmation. So there is a procedure. And I, I hope that with what we just experienced in the country, there will be self-cleansing mechanism. I mean, if you are in, serving in the temple of justice, you must make up your mind that you are on the side of justice. So that is why, again, I'm commending the Supreme Court for not keeping quiet on those observed gaps. But then the status quo that we have right now is that they're taking their decisions. So you go to the high, the higher court, and the highest one is the Supreme Court. And these are some of the concerns expressed by some citizens. That, oh, people will just come, do what they like, and say, go to the court. So I expect that the judiciary will rise up you know, and try to tighten the credibility profile of that uh, institution as part of our national uh, uh, life crucial requirement. You know, it's, it's very important. So, but, I, but I expect that, um, you know, even before the confirmation, some of these issues will be discussed, and that's what we call constant learning personal mm -hmm. development, institutional development, so that you can deliver on your KPIs concerning the assignments you have been given. So it's a good one for the nation, particularly when, like I mentioned earlier, some citizens have expected that there was going to be trouble. For instance, when the governor of Kano was returning to uh, Kano, he decided not to fly, went through Kaduna, and you can see the jubilation as against the blood shedding that we could have uh, experienced, you know. And lesson also for politicians. Uh, you can see the governor went ahead to appoint some uh, elders, advisory body, even from opposition party. You see, so there are several lessons to learn in this. And I believe, by and large, that it's now time for governance after all the judicial 
uh, engagements. Yes. So, so are we, you know, from what you're saying, it is that uh, the possibility of uh, sacrificing what is meant to be on the altar of ensuring stability in the state. Absolutely, if the decision went the other way, it was expected. In fact, business was shut down in Kano State, for instance, and you know Plateau State is already volatile. Yeah. And from what we have seen, it has doused the tension. And that's why I said right now it's time for governance. And what form of governance? Good governance, because the insecurity in the land is so terrible right now so let's see how stakeholders can come together right elections are over judicial interventions over go ahead wow. you know and, and start delivering on governance promises so but then you mentioned some some gaps and loopholes that you hope uh, the national assembly would begin to address as it is that uh, this judicial matters have you know played up at the end of the day and seeing that we're already counting down towards 2027. Are you confident that uh, this National Assembly that we have now, we're looking to these matters critically and address them? I expect they look into the matter. I've said something over the years. If you have the opportunity of making it right now and you look away, that wrong may come to haunt you in the future. It's as simple as that. This is the Ninth Assembly, and I have stated out clearly the assignment of the National Assembly. If you look at the Constitution, Section 4 empowers the National Assembly to make laws for the peace, orderliness, and good governance of Nigeria. Section 5 empowers the President to exercise executive powers, and Section 6 empowers the judiciary. You see, so you are to play your own rules to ensure we have a secured future. Whether you like it or not, you leave office. It's so clear. And my concern right now is that you look at how this affects our economy. Look at the time, I won't say wasted, time engaged and resources engaged in all these judicial interventions, the apprehensions and everything. You see, so you have to look at it and you are there to make laws. Sit down. Review what is going on. The 1978 Mexican statement about public relations says it's the art and social science of monitoring trends, predicting their consequences, and recommending implementable programs to ensure that you have mutual understanding. So there's a need for mutual understanding and goodwill between the leaders and the led right. in this country. And one vital approach is to make laws that will facilitate that and execute the laws that we facilitate that. So it's their tenure now, and that tenure will end someday. So my advice is that they should not just be carried away by the form fair of office and ensure that they are monitoring. I mean, from the days of the elections, the issues of beavers, the issues of uh, IREV, these various issues should engage them in their libraries to study what are the gaps here, what can we amend. They have the powers to our men, and you move forward from there. So when you said that governance should start in earnest, maybe for some <coughs> people, but then um, the judicial intervention has not ended, you know, because by Tuesday we should expect what the Supreme Court will be saying about um, that of Nasarawa. I recall that the tribunal had handed victory to the People's Democratic Party, David Obugadu, which the appeal court overturned, you know, gave it to Abdullahi Sule. So <laughs> this week, may, I mean, talking about Tuesday, uh, do you not feel it may not, Tuesday is tomorrow, really? So, <laughs> do, do you not, you know, uh, apprehensive, maybe not apprehensive, or worry that there might be, tomorrow might also present itself, you know, with some sort of embarrassing moment, just like we saw in, in the previous days, you know, but, uh, from the Supreme Court, tongue lashing the lower court. I don't know why I, I, I felt so worried about that, because we don't know what the Supreme Court might also come out with. You call it tongue lashing, but actually it's, trying to pull them on the right track, you know, and it's professional anyway. And I'm not apprehensive in any way, and I don't want to preempt the Supreme Court decision, but I expect that the Supreme Court will look into the matters, because at that level, it's a matter of laws. Have they erred? If they have erred at the lower level, let it be pronounced. For instance, the Supreme Court has amplified that when it comes to issue of nomination 
It's a party affair. You know, this also came up in Labour. APC was claiming uh, Peter Obi was not a party uh, a member of a uh, Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Those are party issues. So you are expected also to learn the rules because some would have gone to court to waste their resources. And I, I, I keep saying it, lawyers don't lose cases, clients do. So mm -hmm. the clients also are expected to sit down and Google at, at, at best that what are the precedents around this case. And that's how you strengthen the legal framework in any society. So and what I mean by good governance is that, for instance, <coughs> Lagos State Governor has been confirmed. Can we begin to have street lights working? Well, he signed and the 2024 uh, budget into law after all Exactly. That. So in Nigeria, the president has rolled out several warnings about insecurity. Can we begin to implement and hire and fire to ensure we deliver on these things? You know, so, and can we now have stable electricity in the country? And that's why I'm glad about the such light that is on Mambila projects, and yes. if there are people who have cornered our resources, go after them. If some should be prosecuted, prosecute them so that you can fulfill the expectations in section, uh, section 14, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended that states clearly that the security and the welfare of the citizens shall be the primary purpose of government, and we can now create an enabled environment for local prosperity and attract foreign direct investments rather than having some investors jet out of the country. So there are issues of governance that are staring at us. You know, and when you talk about security, permit me to use this platform. Lagos State, for instance, should be fully aware of an imagined banditry that is growing up. You know, many people have issues with their vehicles and suddenly some people emerge from somewhere demanding heavy taxes from them, ready to attack. And, mm. you know, you, you have to be close to the citizens. What are they going through? What are the threats? How can we deal with this? So let the impact of government be felt. We know the government is trying, but a wise man said that the largest room is the room for improvement. Mm. If people have sense of security, they become a collaborative. But if they have sense of insecurity, they become threats, not just to the citizens alone, but to leadership. So let's look at our economy. Let's look at the policies. Let's look at how we can leverage on the partnership agenda goal of the SDG that will be evaluated in year 2030. So how can the nation move forward? And I think right now, on the scale of public opinion, the government appears to be responding to some of these issues and if that is sustained you know in in, in, a, in a little while from now i think we should start singing new songs mm. <laughs> right now the the level of uh, litigations we saw at the end of the 2023 election has seemingly dampened the the minds of a majority of Nigerians with regards to our electioneering processes and uh, the outcomes that we are seeing as well. I wonder how we can turn things around from your perspective. We have a 2027 election coming. It might be too early, but I think we need to begin to talk about that so that we, we do not begin to see this level of uh, interventions by the judiciary because uh, when we say democracy is government of the people, for the people, by the people, it seeming like the judiciary is coming into play as it is now. I've said it clearly, if you don't go to the judiciary, judiciary is not an arm of INEC. Judiciary has no business. So let's first start by ensuring that the umpire delivers according to laid down rules and procedures, talking about INEC. If that is done, it will help prevent this unnecessary uh, or this necessary judicial intervention because Section 65 of the Electoral Act 2022, as amended, opens the gate mm -hmm. for those who want to embark on judicial interventions. But it's not even in all the states that candidates have gone to court. I doubt if anyone, anybody went to court in Kwara State. And in mm -hmm. 2015, the former president of the country, Billy Goodluck Jonathan, lost to APC. He never went to court. So. Right. If you don't go and wake the court up, the court <laughs> won't come to you. Me. So right now, INEC is still the deciding institution right. when it comes to managing our elections. 
So if it is conducted in a way that we don't have different uh, discrepancies, then who is coming? And if the politicians also themselves decide not to go to court, but having said all this, it's your fundamental human right to, to seek justice. And yeah. injustice is a matter of perception. All right. We have be, our time is up, unfortunately, and we have to leave this conversation here. We must thank you, lawyer and public affairs analyst, Gideo Olubun, for your time on the program. Thank you, too. Thank you so God bless much. Nigeria. Right. This is where I would draw the curtains on the program for today, but let's tell you that the views and reactions of all our resource persons are theirs and have no connection with TVC News. Up next is your view with the ladies, and afterwards is this morning with Nifemi Oguntoye. To stay safe. Bye for now.